Welcome back guys to some more Never Alone. We got to this point last time. We just managed to watch some of the clips about this tribe and we have finally met our character. Is there any more insights? Now we've watched the bit about basically the beginning up to the Arctic Fox and the guy with his dad and basically if you had an Arctic Fox you were safe or you'd try and keep you safe. There we are. Ah, we've got a brace against the wind now. It's only going through this tutorial. Ooh, tab. Caribou skin clothing was the best. Caribou was... It, it provided for us in many ways. Our clothing in those days was made of all caribou skin. I grew up wearing... Caribou pants, mittens, caribou skin mattress, blankets. Some people had boots that were made with wolf leggings, sealskin sole bottoms. Baleen was shaved to make insoles. They kept us quite dry and warm as well. But the caribou skin clothing was the best. We would get as many yearlings as we could for our outer clothing. And for a heavy winter, we would get caribou in February or March because the hair was the longest and the skin was the thickest and we would use those for our winter gear. With that stuff on, you could sleep outside in 50 below and it wouldn't bother you a bit. So that's a little bit about the coach she's wearing there. Run, 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 jump. The spirits are to the next fishy. <laughs> Jump! Sila has a soul. Watch this one. Sila is the weather. It also means the atmosphere. Here's the nuna, or the land. And it's anything from the land into the moon, the sun, the stars. That's Sila. It's, uh, it's a very spiritual, and we have a relationship with Sila. Uh, Sila has a soul in the same way we do as people, in the same way animals do. I think spirit helpers in and of themselves are really about how we're connected with things. And so it may be that there is a spirit helper that shows themselves as a bird to show you the way home. Or it may be a spirit helper that actually decides to show themselves with the face and body of a man instead of their animal form. And so I think one of the things that's hard to understand is that it's not one way of seeing things. It's one way of knowing you're connected to everything. We've always had that spirituality of everything around us. It's the interaction you have with the air you breathe, the, the ocean that you gather resources from, the rivers from which you gather fish, the tundra from which you pick berries, the animals that give themselves. It's, it's all of all of that. So that is about the spirit people and how they're connected with Jump 
on the wall. Ah, got ya. Oh, we get. I'm not gonna have to swap in. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I'll go back up yonder here. Up and up. Watch the trapping trail. We'll go and watch. Oh, just achieved and uh, uh, unlocked an achievement. And uh, we'll watch this. In the winter, when we were traveling, we didn't build sod houses. We built snow houses. In Canada, they call them igloo, but here in Alaska, we call them apuya. We do a day of travel, and then we would make a apuya. The next day, my father would set traps. Spend the day there, rest the dogs, give them something to eat, and then the following day we continue to the next place. We'd go to my dad's sister, who had a house at the barn. They had a small sod house over there. We didn't have to do anything. We just visit with them, and my dad and my sister were glad to see each other, and they'd talk away whilst kids played outside or go to sleep. By the time we get back to our home, my father would leave us with our aunt or with my grandmother. And then he'd start on his trips and go check his trap line. We were not into eight to five kind of time, you know. We're in a totally different kind. We're in ecological time. So that's just giving you an insight into how they hunted and stuff and family travel, obviously by sled dogs. Obviously not that far across. Yeah, I know. Oh shit, that was close. Up we go. The save point. Hopefully we're not going to be attacked by another polar bear.
time then, why don't you? On to this one. And across. I love how simplistic it is as well, to be honest with you. With how you're just literally running in a straight line. Very Mario style. set on fire. Well, anyway guys, I'm going to leave this episode here for now. I hope you're enjoying Never Alone and in the next episode I would imagine we're going to see what's happened to her village. That's all for now, so I'll see you later.